Okay, so today's topic is power series. We have already covered uh, series in general. A general piece of advice is whatever you have studied in the series of real numbers, the same things will be here in the series. So you would find that the comparison test, root test, ratio test remains the same as that you have done in the in the series of real numbers. So therefore, series of complex numbers uh, is almost a similar has almost a similar treatment as that of um, the series of real numbers. Now, in today's topic, we are going to do power series. Uh, lately, you are going to understand when uh, some advanced topics are going to come, like Taylor series or uh, topics like uh, Lorentz series. You would really understand that there is a great importance of series in complex analysis. So therefore, this is the right time when I've already taught you series to just have an idea of what is power series. So in this lecture, the idea is to uh, develop an idea of or develop the concept of power series. So before understanding the concept of series, a uh, power series, we must define the notion of limit superior and limit inferior. So what is limit superior and limit inferior? For that, we are considering a sequence Rn of let's say real numbers. So let us consider a sequence Rn of real numbers, then limit superior, which is written this way, or sometimes people write this way. So limit superior is nothing but it is the least upper bound of least upper bound. Achha, okay. Before that, let us first consider that Rn is bounded. Let us first consider that Rn is bounded sequence. Okay. And it has at least one, has at least one uh, convergence of sequence. So that we already know that if a sequence is bounded, then it has uh, convergence of sequence then from the whole zeno theorem. So let us consider a sequence Rn of real numbers, uh, which is bounded sequence. And therefore it has at least one convergence of sequence. Then limit superior is defined as the least upper bound of, so limit superior is defined as the least upper bound of all, so least upper bound of limits of all Convergence of sequences. And what is limit inferior? So limit inferior, we'll write this way. So this is the greatest lower bound of limits of all convergent subsequences. Now this is true when your sequence is unbounded, uh, sorry, bounded. So therefore it is capital L in small L, capital L I'm denoting for the limit superior, which is nothing but the least upper bound of limits of all convergent subsequence. Small L is limit inferior, which is the greatest lower bound of limits of all convergent subsequences. So this limit superior and limit inferior, uh, this notion I have developed for the conversion for the bounded sequences. Now, what if that unbounded, what if Rn is unbounded? Then we have to introduce the notion of real extended real number system, where you have both minus infinity and plus infinity. We adopt them as a symbol here. Now for that case, if Rn is unbounded, then the limit superior would be infinity. If it is unbounded. And if it is unbounded, then the limit inferior would be minus infinity. Okay. So here we'll take these things as a symbol to denote large positive number and large negative number. Okay. So let us take one example. So from that you can understand. So let us take one example. Let us say a n is equal to minus one raised to power three n. So as you are aware, it will have two subsequences. One subsequence would be what? If I take n equal to one, then it will be equals to what? Minus one. If I take n equal to two, then it will be equals to one. If I take n equal to three, so this will be minus one. 
if i take n equal to 4 it will be 1 so if the if i am considering the even numbers even subsequences so this will become a constant sequence 1 1 and if i take odd then it will become uh, an, another constant sequence which is minus 1 minus 1 minus 1. okay so it has two subsequences one tending towards minus 1 and one tending towards plus 1 so clearly the supremum of limits of all convergent subsequence is what it is one so clearly limit superior would be equals to what so limit superior of an would be equals to plus 1 and limit inferior an would be equals to minus 1. okay let us take a few more examples so that you can understand from example and then we'll move to because my idea is not to teach you here limit superior and inferior in greater detail the idea is just to introduce it so that it will become so what do you think limit superior and inferior would be clearly the limit superior would be equals to plus 2 because it will have two subsequences one would go towards plus 2 and one subsequence that is the odd one will go towards zero so limit inferior bn would be equals to what zero i hope it is clear similarly if you take another example let us say cn which is equals to n into minus 1 whole raised to power n now here this is an unbounded subsequence this is an unbounded uh, this is an unbounded sequence so uh, where it will lead so limit superior would be equals to what limit superior cn would be equals to plus infinity and limit inferior cn would be equals to minus of infinity i hope it is clear till now Yes, sir. I hope all these things are clear. So this is limit superior and inferior. Now uh, let us move to something called as power series. So what is a power series? So as the name suggests, it would contain some powers. Okay, it would contain some powers. Okay. So without wasting time, a power series is an expansion of the form this. so if a power series is centered at a so center of this power series is what a is a and uh, this is called as a power series this expression this entire expression is called as the power series so this is a power series centered at a okay and here this ak is some some coefficients there would be some coefficients so for taylor series we'll find that this is equal to some uh, derivative of function at a so we'll 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 see all those things later on but this is the general expression of the power series where ak a and z all belongs to set of complex groups so this is how we understand this is the general form of the power series so this is the most general form of the power series Okay, is that clear to you? So, like example wise, if you think one of the example can be let's say this. So, this is one power series. You have different other powers of z raised to power n, and this is multiplied by n raised to power n. Another power series like this. This we have already seen. This is a geometric series. So, geometric series also happens to be a power series. and another one is let's say all these things we are going to see don't worry okay for this series we already know that this series converges only if modulus of z is less than 1 this is your famous geometric series what about the convergence of these two series whether they will converge or not converge so before that we'll introduce you uh, there is a there is a need to introduce something called as radius of convergence a term called as radius of convergence so if if this is your power series let us say an z minus a whole raised to power n n equal to 0 to infinity if this is the power series
So let a n z minus a whole raised to power n be a power series. And we are considering the extended real number system from zero to infinity. So this r, this quantity r, I'm going to define later, which is nothing but the radius conversions only. This r, how to find this r, we'll see later on. But this r is, is in the extended real number system lying from zero to infinity. Let now I'm defining this power series. Let a let a n z minus a whole raised to power n be a power series. Now for all z belongs to C. If z minus a mod is less than r, we say that series summation a n z minus a whole raised to power n converges absolutely. Absolutely where? In this radius of convergence, which is r. And for all z belongs to C, for this reason, mod z minus a greater than r, the series diverges. So if at all, we know that r is that radius of convergence, no, sorry, diverges. If we know that r is the radius of convergence, so I'm just writing, if we know that r is the radius of convergence, then if, if I'm making a series with the center at A, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm, what, what you say, if I'm constructing a power series with center at A, then this is your re, uh, region of convergence. This is your region of convergence. And how, how would I express this region? This ex region is expressed by mod of Z minus A less than R. It implies that within this region, the series converges and beyond this region, the series diverges. Here the series diverges. Is that clear? So again, I'm telling you, there is something called as radius of convergence R, which belongs to the extended real number system. R can have values from zero to infinity. Now I'm defining a power series that is summation a n z minus a holds to power n. Now for all z belongs to C, if, if the, if, if R is the powers, if R is the radius of convergence, then for the all the complex numbers such that modulus of Z minus A is less than R. Now for all for all of this region, the series converges absolutely. And for this reason, that is mod of Z minus A greater than R, the series diverges. Uh, now the question arises: how to find this R? How to find this R? Now the question arises: how to find this R? So we'll have some formula, don't worry, to find this R. But I hope it is clear. Sir, equal to R to Haji, what happened? Equal to R. What is it? It's not audible. Minus A equal to R to series. What is it? 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 Sorry. Z minus A equals to R series ka kya nature hoga aisa? No, no, no. Vaha pe nahi pata chalega. You will have to see. So, uh, on the boundary, we will have to see. On the boundary, we will have to see. So, I will write it here. On the boundary, we will have to. So, again, uh, on the boundary, we will have to see. Whether the series is convergent or not. So, on the boundary, we have to reach it. So how would we recheck? We'll see all these things, don't worry. But overall, understand that if I'm saying that series has a radius of convergence R, what does it imply? It implies that a series, let's say centered at A, will be convergent in this particular region. And this particular region is nothing but mod of Z minus A less than R. And if I'm saying that R is the radius of convergence, then the series will be divergent for mod of Z greater than R. Now, what about equals to R? That we have to see. For that we have to see, we'll keep all the points of Z on, uh, like uh, all the points, and then we'll uh, we'll be able to figure out. Otherwise, uh, so all these things we are going to cover in detail, don't worry. But understand this is the basic definition of how we start. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay.
Now R is also R is uh, like R is a member of real extended number system. So you can have radius as infinity also, and you can have radius as um, zero also. Okay, so this particular open disk, this particular open disk centered at A and R, centered at A and with radius R is also called as the disk of convergence. So this is called as the disk of the convergence of the power series. Now, if this disk extends to complete real, complete complex numbers, so if this is equals to the entire complex bit, then clearly the radius of convergence would have been plus infinity. So if I'm saying that the radius of convergence is complete complex plane, obviously it implies that radius of convergence would have been plus infinity. Okay, so so far we have not seen uh, uh, so far, we have not seen anything uh, with re respect to um, what you can say, anything with respect to how to find this radius of convergence. Okay. Now, see, in order to find radius of convergence, we have <laughs> a certain formula that I'm going to introduce. So, let summation an z minus a whole raised to power n, n equal to 0 to infinity, be a given power series. So let us say we have this power series. Then in the, in the, so I, I'll write here itself. So assume that, assume that limit exists, which I'm going to write limit exists uh, in real extended real number system. So whatever limits I'm going to write, I'm going to I'm, I'm writing that the limit exists in exists exist in the extended real number system. Now, this limit I'm talking. So limit n tends to infinity, a n plus one upon a n. This will give you a quantity which is like a row. And another thing, limit n tends to infinity, a n modulus raised to power one upon n. This is also row. So if both of these limits, if any of these limits exist in extended real number system, then the radius of convergence is expressed as rho inverse. Then the radius of convergence is expressed as rho inverse. Okay. And if you want to really directly find what is the disk of convergence, what you need to do, you direct, instead of comparing this a n plus one upon n, directly compare this a n. Let's say it is centered at this. You directly compare this n plus one a n. From here, you will get uh, the if you do the, this thing directly, then you will be able to get what you will be able to get the disk of convergence. So I'll come to all these things. Don't worry. Okay. So let us take one example and then uh, uh, okay. So let us take one example that we already already written the example number third. I think. First, take the example number third. So we have already write, written some examples here. So let us take example number third. So example number third was summation n equals to zero to infinity, z raised to power n divided by I think n factorial third, right? N factorial to n third. I think n factorial. Okay. Now. Um, Okay, so what about this? How to go about this? So uh, clearly your a n here is one upon n factorial. So let us first find limit n tends to infinity a n plus one upon a n. So what would be a n plus one upon n? This will be equal to one upon n plus one factorial. And here you will get n factorial. Is that clear? So you will get one upon n plus one and which is certainly equal to zero. So your row is equal to what? Zero. And we are talking of extended real number system. So row inverse here would be equals to plus infinity. So the radius of convergence for this particular series would be plus infinity. It implies that this series, 
converges for all finite or for all z belongs to c where c is the finite complex space. so are you getting my point so if you want to write the if you want, want to write the radius of convergence how would you write a uh, disk of convergence would be this z minus it is centered at zero modulus less than what is your radius of convergence infinity so clearly this implies that your uh, that your disk of convergence, which is uh, disk of convergence is nothing, but it is equals to what? The disk of convergence centered at zero is nothing but infinity. So if the, uh, if is, is the entire complex plane. So if R, this is equals to infinity, then it implies that your series converges for all points in the finite complex plane. Is that clear? So the disk of convergence here would be the entire complex plane. The radius of convergence would be plus infinity. Is that clear or not clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Now let us say, um, let us take another example. Um, let us say I'm talking of not factorial, and if I'm talking of something like um, this thing. So let us take one example. Summation n equals to zero, 1 to infinity because and here you have, let's say, z raised to power n divided by n. Let's say this is the radius of convergence. Then what? Uh, this is the series, sorry. Then how to find the uh, radius of convergence? Okay. So, so let us do. Next. So, huh, okay. so this is like uh, limit n tends to infinity. This is one upon a n plus one upon a n. So this is equal to one. So this series converges for all mod z less than one. Okay. Now again, your question: What about the points where mod z is equal to one? What about the uh, what about the circle? Okay. So what about the points on the circle? Unit circle. Is that fine? So the, the the disk of convergence would be this. So disk of convergence would be simply mod z less than one, right? Because the radius of convergence turn this row quantity comes out to be one, and radius of convergence certainly is inverse of rho, and this is equal to one. But what about the quantity? What about the points which lie on the circle? Is that clear? So you just take two points, and it will you will be able to understand. So if I take z equal to one, and if I take z equals to Sorry, if I take z equal to minus one, if I take z equal to one, this will lie certainly on the circle, isn't it? Yes, sir. Okay, just giving you an example. So if I take z equal to one, then what will be the series? Series will be of the form summation n equal to one to infinity one upon n. This is clearly a divergent series. This you know from your real analysis that harmonic series is a divergent series. But if you take z equal to minus one, then certainly this series is. Convergent. Is that fine? So on the circle, you cannot make any conclusion right now because if you take z equal to one, then it will be something. If you take z equal to iota, then again this will be equals to what? This will be equals to n equal to one to infinity iota raised to power n upon n. Now iota raised to power n is some very different thing. It can assume the it can assume the form one also. It can be iota also. It can be minus one also, and it can be minus i also. So again, this will be a divergent series. Because for series to be convergent, the limiting value should be equal to zero, if you remember. Is that clear or not clear? Yes, sir, clear. Anna, so understand, on the circle, you can have different possibilities, but overall, this particular radius of convergence would be mod z less than 1. Yes. Okay. So it, 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 if it is iota also, then see, if you take 0 mod 4, then it will be 1 upon it. If you take i uh, to be equals to z, 2 mod 4, that is, if you are having uh, numbers like uh, 6 or uh, like 14, <laughs> all those things. So then it will be minus one raised to power n. So all these things, uh, you know, 
however, this is convergent anyway. Okay, so this is convergent anyway. Sorry. Because iota raised to power n, right? so iota raised to power n means what? Iota raised to power n is either 1 iota minus 1 or minus iota, right? This is not being taken. Huh? So this is uh, fine. This is fine. Just give me a minute. But overall, you see that on the uh, circle, on the circle, uh, you cannot say anything very uh, with all certainty that whether it is convergent or divergent because on the circle itself, you can have a point minus one. On the circle itself, you can have a point plus one. And uh, you can also have a point iota. So if you take iota as a point, uh, then uh, iota raised to power n can be can have four different implications. But all those uh, all those things you have to see. So basically, if, if it's if this n is such, so let's say if n is such, so if I take n is such that it gives me zero mod four, then it will be equals to one upon n. So therefore, it will be a divergent series. Are you getting my point? So all these things you never know. So uh, therefore, uh, one has to understand that uh, this particular uh, radius of convergence here is mod z less than one, and on the circle you cannot say anything with certainty. On the circle, that is mod z equal to one, you cannot say anything with certainty. There is a possibility that you may get a convergence series also if you take z equal to minus one. Is that fine? Yes, sir. Okay, so let us say, uh, what about this? n equal to zero to infinity. Let's say z raised to power n upon uh, n square. What about this? Whether this series converges or diverges? Less than one per converge current. Okay, so let us do. So limit n tends to infinity. This is we are trying to find the radius of convergence. So this is n plus one whole square. Then you will get n square here. So this is one. So radius of convergence is one. So mod z less than one is the radius of convergence. Is it the same? Now about your question. What if mod z is equal to one? What if mod z is equal to one? Whether this converges or not converges. Whether this converges or not converges. So if you take uh, mod z equal to one, then this particular series will be equal to what? If I just take a mod of it, it implies what? It implies mod of z raised to power n divided by n square. And if mod z equal to one, this, this will be equal to one upon n square. So clearly the series converges absolutely. The series converges absolutely on the circle also. Converges absolutely on the, and if series is absolutely convergent, then it is convergent. So it clearly the series converges absolutely on the circle of convergence on the on the circle that is mod z equal to 1. So in the previous example, we saw that on the circle that is mod z equal to 1, the series was showing both the behaviors convergent and divergent. But here on the circle, series converges absolutely. Okay, so you cannot say anything certainty. You can say things with certainty also. You may not be able to say things with certainty. So on the circle itself, you have to see every time. On the case by case basis, you have to see how things are behaving. So nothing can be said about the uh, circle of convergence. Okay, on the circle, you have to see case by case basis. Well, there will be no such generalization that I can write. Is that fine? Yes, sir. Okay. So I hope it is clear. So uh, I hope it is clear. Now see, um, Okay, so now having said all these things, there is another important formula directly I'm writing, I'm not giving you uh, the proof to it, which is called as the Hadmard formula of Hadmard formula of radius of convergence. So what is Hadmard formula? The same formula, but with the notion of with the notion of limit superior and inferior. So radius of convergence of radius of convergence of the series summation. Let's say I'll change the symbol Cn, Z minus A whole raised to power N. In general, the most general way of writing it is 
but upon row. So you know that we did what? Uh, one upon row because R was what? R was simply equals to row inverse. So one upon row is nothing but it is equals to limit supremum CN modulus whole raised to power. Okay, so this is called as the Hadmart formula of finding the radius of the. So we'll do a few questions here, and uh, just take. I am going to teach all these topics in greater detail, just because a few of these things may appear here and there, then it will be a difficulty for me. So therefore, I have already given you all these things, uh, a little bit of introduction here itself, so that whenever we are going to use the notion of power series somewhere ahead, so you will not be. Uh, Thinking key what is coming ahead. So uh, let's say now do let us do a few questions. Let us say n raised to power n z raised to power. What can you say about the radius of convergence? So I'm giving you some rate series where I am wanting to find some radius of convergence. So what about the uh, radius of convergence of this series? So clearly you know that uh, a n is what? n is equal to n raised to power n. And you know from at least real analysis by now that it will not be good to use a ratio thing here. So it is better to use root kind of thing. So what is rho? You have already known rho is equal to what? Rho is equal to limit n tends to infinity n raised to power n whole raised to power 1 upon n which is equals to limit n tends to infinity n and it is equals to plus infinity. So if plus infinity comes, it implies what? It implies that your radius of convergence is 0. That it converges nowhere. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, similarly, if you just take a little bit different example, I'm just giving you an example, very easy example, so that uh, right now my idea is not to give you much questions. My idea is to introduce concepts to you. So, how would you do this? So, again, it's better to use what? It's better to use ratio test. Uh, sorry, it is better to use root test. So, rho would be equal to what? Rho would be equal to limit n tends to infinity 1 upon n simply 0. This converges absolute, This converges everywhere because radius of convergence is infinity. It implies that open disk centered at 0 with radius infinity. It implies that it covers the entire finite complex plane. So, it covers the entire finite complex plane. So, this is convergent everywhere on the complex plane. What about this series then? I think, what about this series? Summation, 2 raised to power n, z raised to power. What about this series? So clearly, again, you can know that the radius of convergence would be equal to what? Rho would That's be equal right. to simply 2. So radius would be equal to 1 upon. Let us take one more example, a few examples more so that you get used to the idea. What about the radius of convergence of this? log n whole power 2 z raised to power n. What about this? What do you think the radius of convergence would be? What about the radius of convergence? So clearly you know that what is your an? At least that you know. Your an is equal to log n whole square, right? Your an is log n whole square. Okay. Now you see for large n, this is your log n. And for large n, you know that who is going to dominate. You know that for large n, as n tends to pretty, who is going to dominate? Whether n is going to dominate or log n is going to dominate. So you know that for large n, because you're trying to take the limits at infinity. So clearly we know that for large n, log n would anyway would be less than n. Okay. Is that fine? Yes, sir. Okay. And anyway, it is going to be uh, greater than one because it achieves uh, one at e. So beyond that, I know that it's, it's going to be at least greater than equal. Is that fine or not? For large n, large n, at least for greater than e, I'll write for all n greater than three at least. For, for all n greater than three at least, I can write this. 
Okay. So now if I want to write log n uh, raised to power, uh, sorry, what was it? Log n square, I think, sorry, log n square. So log n square, so it will uh, lie between n square and one. And if if I want to find the radius of n versions, first I'm supposed to find rho. What would be rho? Limit n tends to infinity, a n raised to power one upon n. So I'll take one upon n both sides. So this is one only log n raised to power two upon n and it will be n raised to power two. So basically a n will lie between n raised to power two upon n and one. And you know that this limit, if you don't know, at least remember this, uh, this I've done in real analysis already. If I've not done, I'll repeat it. But this limit, you can take log also and do the same log, take log both sides. And then also you can do it. And then there is another way, more fundamental way of defining all those things, but I'll do it later on. So limit n tends to infinity n raised to power one upon n, you already know this is one. So this raised to power one upon n. So limit n tends to infinity a n raised to power one upon n by Sandwich theorem, it is equal to what one. So what would the radi radius of conversions would be simply one. I hope it is clear. <laughs> Yes, sir. Okay, so two examples I'm giving you as an exercise, you try to do them. If you cannot get, then I'll do it for you. So this is your homework. Try to find the radius of convergence of two of the far, two of the things. One of them is this. Just give me a minute. Okay, just give me a minute. Okay. Formula is n factorial divided by n raised to power n, z raised to power n. Try to find the radius of convergence of this series and try to find the radius of convergence of this series. Three n whole factor. So try to find the radius of convergence of both of these series. Okay. Uh, so this sums up our uh, brief lecture on power series. Uh, why I have given only very brief series, purely brief lecture, because uh, all these things you already uh, have done in your real analysis part. Tomorrow we are going to do a few questions on uh, power series. So tomorrow we are going to do more questions on power series. Um, I hope you are going to join the next lecture on functions. That will also be a brief lecture, I think, only a 40 minute lecture, but uh, try to join that. So, so I hope it is clear till now. So everything is clear till now. We've only introduced the notion of power series and the radius of it's nothing else. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay.